Welcome to the Nitpicky Nerds Guide to Card Draw. You're going to see all our favorites, a couple traps we don't like, and even some secret technology. I'm your host, Joe Cherries. I'm your host, Beezy, and that makes us the Nitpicking Nerds. Subscribe to the channel if you like what you're seeing. That's just a general agreement we've come to. Yeah, and besides, you want to be subscribed to this channel because our subscribers are 10% more likely to outdraw their opponents. The Nitpicking Nerds have no control over the variants of card draw in EDH. Well, how am I going to outdraw my opponents? Don't I have to know what card draw to play? Yes. That's what we're doing. We're talking about what actually is card draw, because we're going to have to define it just to avoid as much confusion as possible. And then we're going to talk about our expectations, and then a, sort of like a priority list, and then get into like specific cards we like and hate. Yep. We're going to talk about card draw. So let's define card draw, because obviously there could be many different, defini different definitions, but we're going to use this definition for the sake of this video. Obviously, this isn't the definition that defines all of card draw, but it is for this video. Yeah, it is effects or spells that give you access to more non-specific cards to cast or play from your library than were spent initially. We had to make it kind of wordy. Uh, we also think it's different from card advantage. For example, I can if I get three creatures back from my graveyard with one card, that's card advantage. But it's not card draw just under this definition. It mostly just exists so that we can show you as many cards that are in the same category as possible. Yes, this excludes cantrips because it lets, that gives you access to one card. Uh, while also spending one card. This this, this doesn't include uh, Faithless Looting because for the basically for the cast the cost of it, the spell makes you discard two. So you, even though you see two new cards, you have to discard two, and you still have access to the same number of cards you had before. Right. So without any specifics, we can get right into the expectation. So these are sort of standards or rules of thumb that we like to live by when we're building decks or just a new card comes out and we're looking at how to evaluate it. Yeah. So the first one is one-time sorcery speed draw spell is bad unless you can get a better rate than you can from instance for example something like treasure cruise can get you three cards for one mana and that's something you can get nowhere else yeah one kind of model i use in my head that doesn't always work but typically i'm looking for it if it's a sorcery speed and i gotta tap out on my turn uh, i want at least seeing one new card per mana so if it's three mana i want to draw three cards off it like painful truths is an example of that yes but divination one step below is terrible. Yeah, uh, that's a rule of thumb. Obviously, it doesn't apply to actually everything, but it applies in most cases. Uh, second rule, one-time sorcery draws usually never go above three CMC. Again, it's a rule of thumb, not a necessarily always true, but if you're going at sorcery speed, you want to keep it pretty low because you have to use that on your turn. You have to like tap a lot of your mana and then you're not leaving up spells for other players turns yeah you can't just spend all your time going all right guys i'm gonna fill my hand up i'm gonna play my reliquary tower i'm gonna play all the harmonizes and concentrates in the whole world and then i'm gonna have 12 cards in my hand and like then the game's over you just you took three turns to do that and now you've lost because you can't interact with this crucial threat or you just get run over yeah exactly uh instant speed draw gets a boost since it's versatile and gives you more choices meaning like uh, say I have some sort of four mana draw instant in my hand. That can draw, doesn't matter, whatever amount of cards. Now, because I am able to hold it up to the other player's turn, I am representing counter magic. Even if I don't have it, you look at me and I have three untapped islands and a forest. You're like, well, he could easily have a counter spell. Right. The fact that this also speaks to, well, I would play four mana instant draw three over uh, four mana sorcery draw four. Yes. Like the fact that I can now play on anyone's turn that I want or have the option to play a different spell or no spells or counter a spell or flash my commander in or something else, just that is so much more valuable than one extra card and wasting your whole turn. Absolutely. What's the next rule here? The next rule is repeatable card draw on permanence is good, but you need synergy to really squeeze as much value as you can out of it. Uh, we we have the, the baseline example that everyone goes to is Phyrexian Arena. It's repeatable. It's easy to do, but you get one card per turn and not right away. So we're, we want stuff that says, like, sacrifice a creature, draw a card. Whenever a creature dies, draw a card. Whenever a creature enters a battlefield, draw a card. Like, triggers that you can just keep going over and over and over. Or, like, repeatable, let's say, Muldrifter. ETB, draw two. Well, that's, eh, it's pretty medium. But when you flicker it, now it's just insane. 
yeah, you can get so much value out of something like a mold drifter because it can stick around if you just have a flicker effect. Um, X spells are great when they scale with the game because obviously you can use this draw like three cards for six mana with something like a blue sun zenith. But if you get in the late game and you have 12 mana, now all of a sudden that card becomes a draw nine. Right. It's the usually X spells are not super efficient. They only get more efficient the more mana you spend. But the fact that you could fire off one of these X spells to just replace itself and draw an extra card, like draw two or whatever you have you. That just adds so much more playability to it, whereas if you've got a 4-mana draw 4 sorcery, that's a made-up card that we're talking about, like stuck in your hand, there's not really time to fire that off. Synergies with your deck also gives things a huge boost. For example, if your deck really likes instant sorceries, then instant and sorceries get a huge boost up in the deck. For example, if you're playing Baral as your commander, obviously instant and sorcery draws get a huge boost because of the synergy. I will take synergies that draw less cards over no synergies that draw more cards in most cases. All right, now moving on to the priority list. Where do things lie? Basically, what do we want the most? What do we not want? What are we looking for? And then all the way down, like, eh, what's the worst kind of draw spell? So starting best of the best. There's some crazy cards, legal and commander. Uh, so just for a quick example, we'll start here. Necropotence, uh, that's a best of the best one. It doesn't matter if you have synergies or not because the stupidity of this card and how much advantage it can get you is insane. It's a staple, basically. If you're in black or you're in whatever color this staple is in, highly consider playing that card. Next, right below, best of the best, high synergy card draw. That's how valuable it is. If your deck has a lot of creatures, then you want Beast Whisper over a lot of other stuff. Like Beast Whisper's uh, stock goes way up. Yeah, if you have exactly if you have a 50 creature deck, Beast Whisper goes from being this okay card to this insane card where you can just start abusing it so easily. Oh yeah. Uh, right after that, we have versatile card draw such as x spells or maybe some modal spells that also have draw in it like mystic confluence throws right in here and it's like oh it can draw two cards or draw three cards or counter a spell or do anything like that's the perfect example of holding up a bunch of mana and you're going to get something done exactly and then we have instance over sorceries we talked about that already and we know you want the instance way before you want the sorceries right okay now to get a little specific these are our favorite cards to play our favorite card draw that we go to for various deck types or just in general starting off with best of the best I don't know if we need to read all these. Probably don't really need to read any of them. But Necropotence, Skull Clamp, those are two cards that we might just ban. <laughs> Ad Nauseum is really, really good. Ristic Study, Mystic Remora, classic. Consecrated Sphinx, if you don't answer it, you win. If they don't answer it, you win. And then Bolas and Citadel, that actually just can win the game straight up. I was just going to say, if it doesn't get answered, they might just win. It's <laughs> yeah, such a good card. That one's really good. Uh, so let's go. We're going to do some colors here, right in order. Wooberg, obviously. Uh, white, not much in the card draw department, but a few good ones. Uh, Mentor of the Meek draws for like tiny creatures. Uh, you can pay one when they answer, get a draw. And then we have Mangara the Diplomat, brand new card from brand new threat from brand new set. I was hoping you were going to say it. I was uh, hoping you were he's from M21 and he's awesome for white decks. He lets you draw when you get attacked by a bunch of creatures or two or more. And he lets you draw whenever somebody casts two spells in the turn. Treasure Cruise and it's little sister i don't know i had to pick a, a family member <laughs> dig through time they both have delve so they only cost one or two mana but the versatility of it if you don't want to delve anything they can cost more if you don't if you can afford to take the hit and dig through time is an instant anyway they're gonna look at they're gonna get you two for ones or three for ones they're, they're great cards yeah chemistry's absolutely. insight and deep analysis pet cards of mine chemistry's insight draw two instant speed with jump start and then deep analysis draw two for four sorcery speed but has two mana flashback and pay three life to draw two more cards. So these cards, you don't even have to cast. You can throw in the graveyard with something else, and then that's a form of card advantage because now you have a castable spell in the graveyard that then gets you card advantage. Oh, yeah. Another, this is like one of my pet cards. Uh, Nezahal, Primal Tide. Whenever your opponents cast non-creature spells, you draw a card, and you can discard three cards from hand to protect it. Card is great. I want to play this card somewhere, but I don't have any decks that would like that would need it. But I want to play with it because when I see you play with it, it's always so good. It's an awesome card. I, I really like Nuzzle Hall a lot. Yeah, it like so frustrates cool. me that I can't play with it. You I can. Want, I want Nuzzle Hall. You could. You used to not to. Uh, some black ones. Uh, this one, I love this one. I've been playing a Croaks of Discard deck and Asylum Visitor. It's a house. It's easy to get your opponent's hands empty in a game of Croaksa where you just have Croaksa and Discard and all this. A game of Croaksa. Yeah, shut up. Uh, but basically, it doesn't upkeeps. On anyone's upkeep, if they don't have a card in their hand, you draw a card and lose a life. Card is really good. Well, much like Chemistry's Insight and Deep Analysis, you can discard it, cast it for free, and so you get advantage off a different spell, and then the spell that you cast off that spell is going to give you advantage. Yes. Oh, it's so good. Uh, Waste Not. This is a staple of all discard decks. Card is great. It just... But 
if they discard certain things, you draw cards. That's card draw. Right, and it gives you the mana to spend it because the first thing I'm going to discard is lands yes. that I don't need. And that just gives you the mana to, when some guy's like, oh, well, you get to draw three. You're like, okay, cool, I got 12 mana because everyone else discarded the right cards. Ugh, it's kind of gross. It's yeah. so good. Grim Horror Specs and Midnight Reaper are two cards that when your creatures die, you draw cards. They're awesome. If your deck has a lot of creatures going to the graveyard, these their stonks go through the roof. They get to be that Beast Whisperer level where, oh, I can draw four or five cards at instant speed with this. Say like stonks? Yeah, like the meme. Stonks. You haven't seen that meme? No. Oh, it's like my favorite. We'll put it on screen because I love it. Uh, okay. Uh, for red, we got wheels. So windfall is a wheel, but it's blue. Reforge Assault, Wheel of Fortune are the main ones. There's uh, the zero mana suspend one, but that card is so slow. It's very, very slow. But yeah, wheels are very good, um, especially when you know how to build your deck around them or maybe you're taking advantage of the fact they're drawing cards or discarding cards. Uh, that makes wheels go up even more in value. But at the same time, some, you can just get card advantage. You go down to like two cards in your hand, you cast your Wheel of Fortune. Now you're up five extra cards. Yeah, that's why Wheel of Fortune is spiked like four separate times in the past two years where red mages just realize, hey, wait, this can just be a, a, a three mana draw four. And if I use the cards in the right way or I pressure my opponents, they won't matter that they have cards. Yes, exactly. Oh, Wheel of Fortune's great. I need to get one uh, for Kroxa. Ooh, my, one of my favorite pet cards, Commune with Lava, X mm -hmm. red red for an instant, exile top X cards in your library until the end of your next turn, which is important. You can cast them or play them. So you usually I fire this off as a sorcery. I'll like if it's turn five, I'm cool firing this off, or oh, turn six. I'm cool firing this off for five, for three. Hit, you know, like two lands, and you play a land. Next turn, you play the spell and the land. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Commune's a nice little card because red just doesn't have enough card draw. This is a mono red card for the most part. But it's versatile. It's super good. It's, I mean, the, the thing I listed was like the floor of it. I fired it off for eight and then just cast like four or five spells, and it's amazing. Yeah. Uh, next, going to the green, Beast Whisperer. Card is good. Guardian Project. We talked about on Lifecrafters Bestiary. They're all the same. They're all very good. Uh, Garrick Primal Hunter, Rishkar's Expertise. The draw equal to a power. As soon as your commander is like Galta Primal Hunger, these are like the best cards you could ever play. Because if your commander has high power and low cost, or you want to do that in general, obviously these cards just go through the roof. Yes. Uh, Shemak Revelation. It, this is for go wide decks. You draw equal to the number of creatures you control overall. Card is real good. Wait you a minute. That's a sorcery. That costs more than three. So it's one of the few, guess we're hacks. <laughs> one of the few ones that breaks that rule because this is a sorcery that can draw you ten cards, twelve cards, fifteen cards, depending on the board state. And let's not even forget the super relevant ferocious. Where oh well, now I might get hit because I I tapped out. No, I just gained twenty life. Yes, it doesn't matter. Uh, Enchanter says uh, they say whenever enchantments enter, you draw a card. They're great. Uh, inspiring call, versatile, makes all your plus one plus one counter creatures indestructible, and you draw equal to the number of creatures with plus one plus one counter. Great card. I like it a lot. I used to have a Skullbrow deck. It was a one steak sauce in there. I will mention enchantresses can also be white. There's like two or three white ones. Yes, that's true. Uh, white and green. Uh, is there another one? Yeah. No, white and green. And uh, last one, Idol of Oblivion. This is a colorless one. It draws. You can tap it to draw if a token enters the battlefield under your control this turn. This card is great if you have synergies with your commander. You don't really need it in certain color combinations that have more draw, even if you are token based, because it is essentially very close to a Phyrexian Arena type of card, which won a turn. So we understand that this could be bad in most cases, but when you're in a white deck that makes a ton of weenie tokens, then. There you go. It's a perfect place for it. I don't know if this card was custom made for it, but how is this not the best card in a Bruta clad deck? <laughs> <laughs> like the sacrifice, the, the deck that you can sack it on your main phase, get a stupid 10 10, and then completely win because of that is hilarious to me. Oh, yeah. Well, is that a video? Oh, no, wait. We have traps. Oh, yeah. We got more to do. <laughs> We've delved into our psyches for a total of five minutes because we wanted to get the most gut wrenching cards that we don't like at all to just come forth that we can we can I guess mudsling them and kind of talk about why we don't play them and maybe why you shouldn't play them either but you can do whatever you want okay so mind's eye is a really slow card it's a five mana artifact that does nothing upon entering and then each time an opponent draws a card you can pay one and also draw so let's just go through the math and just so six mana draw one seven two eight three this is our this is it hasn't gotten close to good yet Nine, four, ten, five. None of those numbers are good. Like at what point, because it's not going to get better. At what point am I going to say this is worth it? Never. <laughs> Just never, right? I don't know. It's so, the the cost is so much 
too it's too expensive for me. Way, way, way too expensive. I would rather play a way to tutor up a better source of card draw than Mind's Eye. Like just do that. Ugh, Mind's Eye is just it's butts. Go find your wrist extend your skull clamp instead. Just don't even play Mind's Eye. You don't have to go you don't have to stoop that low anymore. Yep. Next we have Phyrexian Arena. We talked about this. We're not a huge fans of it. Maybe if you have some synergies, like when if you're in some sort of enchantment deck, so when it enters, it draws, I feel a little better. My problem with this card is Yes, I agree. This card, when you play it on turn three, is a great magic card. Maybe even turn four or five. Now let's go past those turns. Six, seven, and eight, when the game is getting into the late stages, this card is awful. It is so slow at those points, and that's why I don't like this card. Yes, it's great on turns three. Like, there's probably like a three turns where it's really good. And then after that, the card is absolutely awful, and that's why I'm not a huge fan of it. Yeah, we talked about, we were going over writing the script right before this, and I was saying, well, so it takes four turns to draw four cards but at that point i'd rather spend zero turns and just play um something like um painful truths and just draw three right now i'll even take the i like over for x mean i think i'd rather take the even like the four mana draw three lose three kind an of ambitions thing. cost i'd rather take an ambitions cost over i think of fraction arena because you get the cards right away and you don't have to wait three full turn cycles it can be like those turn cycles are a lot of time i hate waiting for my cards when i don't have to and in black, usually you don't have to. I like, I'll play a Night's Whisper over it or, or something like that. So try that. I mean, you know, maybe just swap Phyrexian Ray for Night's Whisper and let us know how that goes. Jace the Mind Sculptor is next. Whoa, a Planeswalker. Well, we just mentioned this, I think, in our best Planeswalkers list. So we wanted to talk about it. Like, it's a good card. Like, Jace the Mind Sculptor is really good. If you have a bunch of fetches, yeah, you get to brainstorm every turn. In Commander, that ends up amounting to not a lot. Yes. So the first thing about Jace the Mind Sculptor is he's weak because Planeswalkers are weak. He doesn't have a high loyalty. Um, if you play him and plus two him, there's no card gained. He's just now he's at five loyalty. That's so easy to be destroyed. It's so simple. If you brainstorm, he's at three loyalty. He literally dies to lightning bolt at that point. And that, I mean, not that everyone's running lightning bolt, but it dies to lightning bolt. <laughs> How about the fact that let's say I can plus Jace. The number of times it takes to get to his ultimate, that is not worth a card. You do not have one opponent. You have three opponents, and they're all drawing multiple cards a turn, and they're on their you know at their best, which is when I would assume I'd be pulling against them. Jace's fate seal is completely useless. Unsummon for four mana is completely useless, and then you just all you're left with is weird Phyrexian Arena that is brainstorm. And unless you have a, find a way to double your card draw, you've got some crazy synergy going on where you can draw six cards and put two back or put four back or something. I don't know. This is just not good enough. Yeah, it's not, and he doesn't even work well with like the coming with double counters no type stuff. you can't even like deep low skate him or anything he right. just kind of is bad yeah he's just not good in EDH. uh harmonize this card's fine but with the printings of guardian project and um beast whisper beast whisper why can't i think of the name of that weird i don't know <laughs> we just uh, about harmonize it. has gotten a lot worse uh if you're not there are non there are green decks like mono green decks not completely based around creatures hey if you're there Hey, Armonize is fine then. In that yeah, case. maybe you're trying to do some kind of storm spell like Blue Green Spell Slinger or Teamer Spell Slinger. I could see it, but then you're in blue. So maybe, I, I'm not really sure, maybe Wart the Raid Mother. Well, I was that's... just going to say that, actually. Oh, uh, yeah. I was literally thinking Wart is probably the deck that wants you to <laughs> like play Harmonize. Green, red spells. Time to use, a, time to go into my mental vault there. Oh, man. Wart is literally. Green, uh, green, red storm. It's one of our very first tune ups. It's the second tune up we ever did. Yeah, I remember that one. Two I, years ago. Yeah, that was a good, that was a cool one. Uh, yeah. And Divination Stink. Hold on, this is just three mana draw two. You probably don't want to play it. I. It almost doesn't matter what the other text is. I mean, we've just, we just we we showed you the example, of the one that breaks the rule. It's one that's repeatable and it's a creature. Yeah, we're kind of talking about sorceries like Rain or like Breed the Bones. As much as I love that card, Notion Rain, the one the one Demir one that surveils. Like they're just not yeah. where you want to be. But that's the video. So I think where you want to be is a member of our Patreon crew, the Poopy Babies. Yeah. Special shout out to all of our patrons. We love you all as much as we can without making you uncomfortable. Yeah. So we'll announce the winner Friday for this month's giveaway. And then anyone who is now a patron from now on, you're going to be entered to win that card, whatever the new card is. Yeah. There's going to be a new one for the month of September. And if you like supporting us, but you're like, oh, you know what, Nick Picking Ears? I just don't have extra money to give you monthly. I like playing Magic. I spend lots of money on Magic, but I can't support you directly. I'm sorry. Did you well, say spend lots of money on Magic? 
You can add that to the link below, tcgplayer.com. That link will take you to all these cool card draw spells. You can buy them all if you want. You can buy some of them. You can buy a Funko Pop. You can buy a Yu-Gi-Oh card. You can buy whatever you want off of TCG Player. As long as you went through our link, you will be supporting the nitpicking nerds, and we will say thank you. We will say thank you. You just won't hear it. True. <laughs> you just know that we are thankful. <laughs> and you can check Joe Cherries, who streams on Twitch, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, and that's on weekdays. On weekdays and Saturday nights because that's when I do my drunk streams. Woo-hoo. And I'm sometimes never there. He's sometimes never there. Uh, I can't remember the last time he was there, actually. Oh, ooh, and a tidbit. You said earlier, you said in Wooburg order, and that reminds me, I was going to send you a post on Reddit, but somebody's friend made them a doormat, and it said, like, welcome to our home, and it had Magic the Gathering in the middle. And the symbols were green, white, blue, black, red. <laughs> and the f- top comment was... I'm a goofy goober. (laughs) I really, really like that. So there's your daily dose of tidbit humor for those who stayed. Uh, uh, Definitely worth it this time. Definitely worth it. That was good. Uh, Yep, we're heading out. Peace out, Tribe Scout.